Alright, good morning. We're finally back for another cook. I've been doing so many big cooks with like like I said before, with the same stuff over and over again. Um, finally getting into something that I have not done on my offset smoker. Um, I've done one, I've done a, a chicken on uh, my old Oklahoma Joe's, a small one I used to have. Um, I forwarded that one to my little brother because it was gifted to me. And if he ever doesn't want it, I get it back. But um, today I'm gonna be doing six whole chickens, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and half them all, and I'm gonna get half of them seasoned up with a uh, base layer of my own all-purpose seasoning. The other half, so three of them, three of the halves are gonna have the John Henry Jalapeno Ranch. The other ones are gonna have the, uh, the base of what I said, and they're gonna have the um, Fur Delicious American Pie. So I'm gonna show you how I do these and how I prep them. I'm gonna cook them in probably about, about five or six hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them out of the wrapper, get them cut up, laid out, and then uh, let them dry out just for a little bit. Um, didn't quite have the time to do an overnight because uh, we were out all day yesterday. So I'll show you how I get them started today. All right, I'm gonna show you quickly how I do these, make these into half chickens. Um, I've typically in the past when I cook chicken, I've always done the beer can method on either an old pellet smoker or my even my master built. Got some pretty good results from that. Um, it always turned out pretty good, but I'm gonna do these in half chicken style. I like the way they look when they cook and they always seem to be pretty good result wise. So if you take them out by the legs in these packages, they have that brine in there. You see a lot of it gets left in the bottom of the bag there. And if you take this part and dump it, you can probably get a lot of, yeah, a lot of juice out of the actual bird too. A little bit less to clean up. Cool. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Put it on here. Of course, you want to identify which side is which. Some people ask which one is the breast side up. Wings going up like this, that's your breast side. So you want to flip it over find the backbone. Um, I, I don't have any sh kitchen shears right now. I have no idea. Our scissors in this house always freaking disappear, but I know where that bone's at. And I can take this knife here, go down it. You're gonna cut towards yourself like I just did. Make sure you get that hand out of the way. So there's that backbone right there in the middle. It works pretty easy to stick a knife in there like that. Run it up there. Once you get it started like that, it'll literally go all the way to the base and you can pull that out, but I'm going to go ahead and trim some of that extra skin off. I'm a big fan of that. Oops, sorry. Fuck the camera up. Same, same thing last time. I left part of this little wishbone in there. Let's see if I can't get that off there pretty quick. Yeah, sharp knife does, a, does wonders. That little paring knife I got from Amazon. It's the same brand knife as uh, my brisket knife. It's a Mercer. It, it seems to work pretty damn good. So flip it over, flatten it out. Once you've done that, flip it back over. Find that breastbone right down the middle right here. Take an even bigger, sharper knife. Put it right on that thing. Hit it once. You should get right through to the bottom. Ooh, there we go. Just like that. Easy halves. These will go on any size grill, easy too. You don't have to worry about standing them up, but they're gonna cook up pretty good. Good size right there. All right, so I got these six whole chickens halved. Um, what I'm gonna do, I got two people coming to uh, get food later on today, and then I'm also gonna, I made one for us to have for dinner tonight. So what I'm gonna do now, um, I actually like to put a little bit of canola oil spray on them when I put my seasoning on them. So I'm gonna do these four pieces, these actually these six pieces right here, in the John Henry, in my base, that base um, that I make really gives, it adds to the color for sure. And it's got a bunch of good stuff in it that you can't go wrong with when you're talking about an all-purpose type seasoning. Also, it's got a way more coarse black pepper in it, so it will help with a little bit of getting this skin barked up. It's got the, I mean, the, the coarse salt will help with to get the skin crispy. But that black pepper gives it some good color with the chili powder. I could tell y'all what all is in it, but it's, it goes on everything that I cook. My pork shoulders, this is the base for my pork shoulders. And uh, then I put on a little something else that's special on there. Have not, I have not had a pork shoulder from a barbecue restaurant in town that I think is better than mine yet. Um, I've had some briskets I think that are on point that are pretty good, but I'm not gonna give anybody the credit all out yet for the pork shoulders, because I really think that, I really think mine is, is just hard to beat. Um, that being said, I'm not a big barbecue competition type guy, so 
I just go off what people tell me when they buy it and go from there. So you can say it's cocky or whatever, but I don't really, I don't care. I think it's, uh, there's people who do other things better than me and I do some things better than other people. I've been meeting a lot of people in town too that are into the barbecue scene, kind of the, kind of the underground guys that are up and coming, not quite like, you know, big name yet. Uh, but anyway, it's just fun to meet all those guys, go try out their food and see what they're all about also. Might have one of the guys uh, coming over in a couple weeks. We might just sit out back and he's gonna bring his smoker. It's on a trailer and I'm gonna have mine out and we might just cook some briskets together and shoot the shit. Probably record a lot of that. Have a little have a little podcast started maybe out of that. So it'd be kind of fun to meet people that are like-minded, like doing the exact same stuff I like to do as far as cooking, style of cooking, because if you're cooking on a pellet smoker, and you're calling yourself a pit master, uh, I can't relate. I never called myself a pit master when I had a, a pellet grill. Had one for about three, four years and it burned up and I'm kind of glad it did because that set me on a path to be way better and make way better food and put more effort into it than ever before. And that whole simplistic lifestyle where things are easy now and you hit the fucking button and forget it, I'm done with that shit. So everything needs to be a little bit more challenging, a little more difficult, but it's not if you perfect your processes. So anyway, little spiel I had for you. But uh, I'm gonna do V6 in that John Henry. It's pretty good. I think it'll give it some really good color too on top of what I've already put on there. And then um, the rest of them is gonna be it's a completely different taste. Because this American Pie one, it actually has uh, apple and cherry in it. It's, and it gives it a little bit of a sweet flavor. So it's, it's one of my favorites, from, especially from a guy who's local. Um, I have not tried his barbecue yet, but I'm assuming that uh, he knows what he's doing. So these, these six are going to be with the jalapeno ranch, and then these six. I used to put this on wings and I kind of forgot about it. So anyway, these, these six are going to be with this one here, American pie. If you want to try something different, give you a little sweet, a little sweetness with your, with your, maybe your peppery spicy base. This is a great one. It's really, it is really good on wings too. I know the color is going to be killer once I get these done. So I'm going to get these done, get them all seasoned up, and I'm probably just going to throw them back in the fridge for about four or five hours, let them dry up a little bit. Hopefully they'll be nice and crispy on the skin. Forgot to do that. You got to peel that wing back, man. You're going to miss a lot of spots to get some seasoning in. You got to make sure you tilt these sides too. So I'm going to go back through and tilt all these sides and get everything completely covered. And what I'm going to do is cook these on my offset at probably about like 275, 300 ish, something like that range. That way I can get the, you don't want to cook chicken too slow because it'll make that, it'll make that skin freaking rubbery. You don't, do not want rubbery skin. If you're trying to sell this stuff to people who want to come pick it up and they get rubber skin, they're ain't gonna like it. So anyway, we'll go back through, peel all these up, get these ready to throw on the smoker in about four hours. We got a bunch of yard work to do, a bunch of shit to do. So anyway, these are all seasoned up. I'm gonna get them ready to go. All right, so I'm getting my chimney fired up today. I'm get, uh, the chimney with the charcoal getting, that's how I start my fire. And as you can see, I've got a shitload of wood now. I got a bunch of, well, he brought me some hickory. I'm not a big fan of hickory, but it was in the pile. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. I, uh, whenever I got stuff wrapped up, I'll just use that wood to uh, finish off, keep my heat going. But all this whole, this whole log line here is all pecan. And then all this is my cherry wood over here. Not sure what you guys like, but leave a comment if you like pecan and cherry, or if you got a better way of doing it. If you think you like uh, apple and hickory, or whatever you might like, um, I like to hear different people's takes on different types of woods. Um, I used to be a hickory exclusively, a um, little bit of apple wood here and there, but I've really come to find out that I really like the pecan cherry blend. I kind of alternate uh, different logs as I'm going as I go, so um, that's how I like to do it. But I'm gonna get this thing fired up here in a minute. I always do a chimney full of charcoal. And then what I do is I lay, I lay in uh, charcoal or uh, two pecans and a cherry across the top and just sit back and let this thing come up to temperature. Typically that gets me up to that 250, 275 range, but we're probably going to cook a little hotter today around that 300 mark. Um, and then go from there. Sorry, I got, I just did a bunch of yard work. I'm getting, I got bug bites and shit on my legs now. So anyway, going to get this thing fired up and we're going to get, I got 12 half chickens coming on. So uh, never done half chickens on here, but I think I can handle it. So here we go. So there's my chimney dumped in there and here's how I like to do it. There's a lot of different ways. People, some people just put a bunch of logs in there and giant torch on it. But I've always, I've come to find out this is the best way for me to do it. So I do, oh, excuse me, cherry. That's a pecan one from the last fire I had going. I'm gonna go ahead and lay a pecan on top. 
And what I'll do is let these go for a little bit. Might do some shuffling around to figure out what's gonna be a good way to get it fired up. You can see they're already starting to smoke and they'll catch on pretty quick here. Um, I think some of my wood is in pretty good shape. Some of it needs to dry out a little bit more. So anyway, I like to leave my door open for a little bit, let a lot of air in there and then let that fire get raging and then I can adjust the uh, air and go from there. So it's been about a minute and you can see the fires, that top log starting to catch on now and everything else will get rocking here pretty soon. And it's really simple. Once you, give a, once you have your methods dialed in as far as fire management and offset, it's simple and these will burn. These three logs here will burn and I'll get that 250 to 300 uh, range for a couple, two, three hours by doing a little bit of rearranging and adjusting in there. Then I, all I gotta do is add one log at a time and I never have to add charcoal or anything else ever again. It's just straight wood the rest of the time. So that's how I like to get mine going. So the fire's been rocking for about 25 minutes or so now. It's coming out pretty clean, a nice steady flow, um, 250 and rising. So I'm going to keep it up around that 300 mark for chicken, 275 at the low side. But I'm going to go ahead and get these things loaded up. As you can see, got all 12 pieces here. These things look awesome too, by the way. Get a little closer look. Nice and fat. They're going to be nice and juicy too. I didn't do anything fancy brine wise. I just made sure I got them out about six, seven hours before I actually cooked them and put the rub on them so the salt can kind of help with that skin. But I'll be I'll be basting butter on these um, as I go, about every 30 minutes or so, just to make sure I keep that uh, sorry keeps that skin nice and crisp and don't overdo it. So um, you gotta get this thing loaded up. Yeah, sure. We're already at 270 right now. I get the fire adjusted a little bit. We're good to go. I'm gonna get them on here. Let's see how these are gonna lay out. I've never cooked any half chickens in here before, so we're gonna find out real quick. These are American pie. Look awesome. I'm gonna do breast side towards the fire. So I got six pieces, six half pieces that are all that American pie rub. I'm gonna go ahead and get them all on here. Whoops, wrong way. Ooh, I can almost go four wide, not quite. That'd be nice. Let's check. Over. Yeah, I can go four wide, just barely though. So four wide would be nice because then I can only do three rows. That'll cut me off a little bit before I get to the, all the way to the back. And I will probably shuffle some of these around as I go. I know that. I know the dirty hand police be watching these videos and talking shit in the comments, so I'm gonna try to keep just left hand dirty if that's all right with you. Feel that heat coming off of there for sure. Lay a little more rub on some of these real quick. did it. Takes a little while to load them, but if you do it right, you can just get it done in one shot. Everything laid out perfect. Chicken's going to be easy to do. Yeah. All right. That is a full load here for what I'm used to doing. All right. There it is, all laid out. 12 pieces, half, uh, half chickens, all ready to go. Let's see how these go. Here we are about an hour in. I'm gonna be rocking right at 275. I'm gonna check this, have not checked yet to see what kind of color we're getting or what, what the skin's looking like yet. So um, I do have some butter mixed up with a little bit of garlic in it. And if I need to, I'll be basting. Also got some uh, some tongs and a spatula if I need to do some rearranging because of the heat on one side. But this side's actually reading a little bit cooler because I do run that big water pan over here. So we're gonna kind of take a peek and see what it looks like. That's not bad. Man, shit. I think everything looks pretty good so far. I might rearrange this guy right here. This guy right here. I'm gonna face that. Then I'm gonna change this one. I might just do all the 
front to back. So how's that sound? You got no one to rotate your shit, that's for sure. Don't want to get one side too crispy and one side not, not good. Whoop. That's easy. All right, one more. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do this guy too. butter on these edges here. And that wing too. Be a little safe. And I'll be I'll be basing the whole thing here pretty soon, but this middle the whole middle row doesn't look bad at all yet. So what I'll do on this next go round, or if I need to flip and flop, I'll just switch these two around at the, about the next hour mark and we'll be good to go. All right, just did a little swapping around again, put the middle ones uh, closer to the fire and the ones that were close to the fire back over, get some good color on them. I'm gonna go ahead and get them all buttered a little bit. And then here shortly, I am going to be doing a temp check, make sure everything's where, where I want it to be. I think we're getting close. Definitely color-wise, got some really good color, that's for sure. When I, when I butter these right now too, the, the seasoning doesn't come off, so that's good. Goggles, man. Just a little butter, a little bit of garlic. Sorry, I don't have the zoom on there. I have to take my word for it. Just about there. Ooh, baby. Funny, these corners get the hottest. You can tell. Same guy, Valentino, has been buying. He's bought a lot of stuff from me over the last month. He's coming by to get these today. A friend of mine from the gym is getting some, and then one of them's for us. So, while I'm here, shit, I don't have my thermometer. I'll get a temp check here shortly, but that, they're looking pretty damn good. Some good looking color all the way around. These are the ones I just moved from there to there, and these are back there, so I think that's the last swap I'm gonna have to do. A glare on there, and they should be pretty good to go. So quick temp check here. I was just checking this one here on the front. It's still there. All right, so it's reading, it's reading 160, so I think it's probably got 30 more minutes left. I like to get them right about 165 and then just let them rest. Let's get that skin a little bit crispier too. I'm gonna get this fire fired back up close to 300 and we'll be done with all this in probably 30 minutes. Tell you what, that John Henry uh, Jalapeno Ranch, I just licked my finger a second ago after I touched that chicken and it like made my nose run. It's pretty good stuff on there. So um, anyway, been doing a lot of big cooks like I was talking about before. Um, found a way to uh, basically market it within my neighborhood and then my friends and family, mostly my neighborhood though. Um, but anyway, people have been buying a lot of stuff from me. I do everything by the order, uh, by the pound. Uh, sometimes if I have extra room, I'll just make extra. And when I make that extra, I just put a post up um, when I'm cooking. It says pick up tomorrow, this time. Um, I'll tell you my prices now. They're a little bit lower than most of the places because I'm cooking out of my house. And my only overhead really is just my, my fuel that I put in there, the foil I use, um, and then like, you know, a little bit of energy inside. So I charge 20 bucks a pound for brisket right now because I get them for four bucks uh, at Costco. And then uh, pulled pork, I charge 15 bucks a pound. And then when it comes to whole chickens, if I get, because Costco chickens are kind of freaking expensive right now. For a two pack, they're like 26 bucks. I got these chickens up at Walmart, the Tyson ones that were whole chickens. I cut them in half. Um, I got those for uh, like $11 for two. So I'm charging 20 bucks per chicken on those. I uh, haven't really delved into sides too much. I just make the meat for everybody, but I am doing sides today. I'm doing some macaroni and cheese. I'm doing a stovetop method. I'm gonna put breadcrumbs on top. And I'm gonna torch the breadcrumbs and get them nice and crispy. Uh, but I do wanna work on a nice twice baked potato salad as well. So um, if you guys are out there and you're cooking and you think your shit's good and you think people wanna buy it, uh, just start start marketing, start offering it to people. See who wants to buy it. We have a little neighborhood here and I get on the neighborhood app on, on Facebook and that's where I do mine. We actually have a foodies page too. Um, I didn't start it, but if you have a foodies page or you don't have a foodies page on your uh, Facebook group for the neighborhood you live in, just start it. Go ahead and start it up and see um, if you can get something rolling on there and you, all you gotta do is market what you got. If you think it's good, put it out there. 
and you know if it's not good people will tell you or they won't order again if it is good they'll be repeat customers and you can just keep working on your craft and trying to get better every time so anyway uh, this is a new thing for me doing the chicken so uh, i've done it on my uh, i got the master belt back there too and over here i got that acorn but i've done beer can chicken on that and it comes out freaking great uh, but I'm really liking the color I'm getting out of these right now. So hopefully everything turns out great. And uh, my buddy Valentino will keep wanting to buy stuff. And um, I keep doing some bigger cooks for everybody. Uh, I'm about to put a second rack in there, I think, for now. Um, but I am going to go ahead and work on a new smoker, which I'll talk about at a different time on a different video. So I'm going to be doing one on a trailer. It's going to be pretty sweet. So hopefully I can start doing some bigger gigs outside of my neighborhood, uh, doing some breweries and different pop-ups and different things I can possibly get into. So anyway, that's where I'm headed right now. So uh, these chickens will be finishing up pretty soon. The ones I'm going to keep for myself, I'll cut into and I'll show you how they turned out. All right, all those chickens are done. These are the ones we're going to keep for ourselves. The other ones are being held over in the warmer. Um, this one I just pulled off from all the rotating. When you're cooking this many pieces of meat, you got some different rotations. Some stuff takes 15 minutes longer. Some takes 30 minutes longer. It depends on where it was located by the fire. So what I'm going to do is this one here has been sitting out for about 15 minutes or so. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and get that centered up for you. I'll start with this one here and just give it a little peel back. Oh man, I don't know if you can see in there really closely. All that juice just sitting down there. That's pretty awesome. Remember, like I said, I didn't do any fancy brine overnight or anything like that, but you can see that is, that's some dripping juicy, oh shit, <laughs> that's some dripping juicy chicken right there. Look at this. That's awesome. So I'm gonna zoom back out, sorry. All right. So there we got it. We got our, our leg and our thigh piece, and we'll go ahead and separate those real quick. There we go. Juicy all the way around. I'm pretty pumped about that. Let's see how the skin holds up. Mm. There you go. That's freaking great. That skin held up to that bite very, very easily, which is what you're looking for with chicken you don't want rubbery skin that freaking pulls off it every time you bite into it and then you got to take your you got to hold the skin in one hand hold the chicken in the other and you got to take bites of each one that kind of sucks so anyway this is freaking great mm. awesome all right so like i showed you that that bite those both those bites were freaking great skin stayed on thighs good um, we are having this for dinner, so I didn't want to get too far into it, but I can pull this chicken off here, this breast, this little skinny part even, and there's freaking juice popping out of that. Mm. Took about, took between two and a half to three hours to cook, depending on uh, where it was at in the smoker. If you're just going to cook like two, you got one line of, line of heat coming through, coming across, they'll cook in two, two and a half hours easily. But like I said, I was rotating around doing different things, so I've got a whole bunch like I was saying, I got, I got two, seven in the refrigerator already, and these are being held over. So I got all these here being held over in the oven until my buddy gets here and pick those up for his family. And I'm about to make a giant batch of mac and cheese for him, too. Might do a little short with that one, a little YouTube short, and then put it on Instagram, too. If you don't follow me on Instagram, Kansas City Smoked, hook, hook it up, check it out, see if you like it. But uh, if you like what you're seeing, like I always say, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, it's just... Just a simple guy, you know, doing this stuff for fun and ended up uh, just really taking off for me. Uh, anybody can do this, like I said, in your neighborhood. You can do it um, yeah, with your friends, with your family. If you want to start doing stuff like this, or if you just want to cook awesome barbecue and have it in your backyard and then and feed your friends when they come over, you know, we don't have to sell everything. But anyway, um, this turned out freaking great. I've never done them in halves like this. This is another method. Everybody's like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never doing that again. Like, don't say that because sometimes beer can chicken's pretty fucking good. And then sometimes half chicken's good. Um, spatchcock is always good. So try it the way you like it. Try it this way if you like it. Like I said, nothing fancy. Went to Walmart, bought the two pack of, of uh, uh, whole chickens for like 11 or 12 bucks. Cut them in half. I didn't brine them. You could have brined I could have brined them overnight in some sort of liquid or just salt or whatever, but chose not to. Um, and they still turned out juicy. I think a lot of that stuff is just. I don't, know if it, I don't know. People are always trying to push shit. Like, you know, check out my new my new thing that I have that brines meat the best. And it's like, does it really make that big a difference? I don't I don't know. I really don't know because this is juicy as hell. And I don't know if it can get any juicier than that. If it gets 10% juicier, 
and it's worth a hundred bucks to you to go buy one of them fancy things, then go do it. But if it's not, just do it like this. Keep it simple, stupid. So anyway, if you like what you're seeing, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Appreciate you.